to call the message today. Amen. Amen. Open with me to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 61 and 2. Isaiah, I'm sure you know, is in the Old Testament. 61 and 2. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Father, thank you because your word is true. I pray as your word goes forth, anoint these lips of clay, that I will declare your word as an oracle of God. Anoint every ear to hear this word. Anoint every heart to receive this word. May this word bring harvest in our lives. May you use this word to challenge our faith. May we arise and shine as your word has said and be glorified this moment. Use your word to challenge our faith this morning and to cause us to arise and shine. I pray that everyone hearing this message will never be the same again. Touch lives by the power of your word. I take authority over every spirit of destruction. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I banish you to the pit of hell. Have your way, Holy Spirit. I yield my spirit unto you. I pray that I may decrease that you might increase. Let this word fall upon the good ground of our heart and let it produce a harvest that will last into eternity. Thank you, Lord, for it is done in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says amen. amen. I want to speak on arise and shine. Many times we come to the point where the light of God and the glory of God in all seem to diminish, seem to be to, to, to be tuned down or seem to even be extinguished. There are times when people's lives and destinies experience an extinguishing of the glory of God or the light of God in them. And many times the people of God come to the point when it seems as if God is not showing up. It seems as if the light of God is not there and the glory of God is not there despite the great plans and despite the great potentials they may have. But God is calling us this morning. In the scripture we read, the word of God challenges us to arise and shine. Why? Because the glory of God is risen upon us. I want to talk about how we can get to the point where we arise and shine. I want to share four things with us to help us this morning. The fourth thing I want to talk about is the process of arising. How do you arise and shine? There is a process to arising and shining. The process involves, number one, forgetting the past. If you are going to arise and shine, you've got to come to the point where you forget your past. It could be a past success. It could be a past failure. The past has a way of keeping you from reaching the future. The past has a way of keeping you from fulfilling your destiny. The past has a way of making you not to move forward to the place where God has destined you. Let me talk about past success first. Many times people, some people, even organizations, allow their past successes to hinder their future success. Do you know that just because you were successful in the past is no guarantee that you will be successful tomorrow? The fact that you succeeded in something yesterday is not a guarantee that you will succeed tomorrow. If you want to arise and shine, if you want for the rest of year 2022 and the rest of your life, if you want to see the light of God shine and the glory of God shine, come on, it's time to forget about the past successes. Thank God for the times you succeeded in the past. Thank God for the great things you did in the past. Thank God for the great accomplishments of the past. But you know what? All of those past successes, they are in the past now. If you don't look forward and keep pressing on, if you allow the past, you can allow it to hinder your future success because you can just relax and be finding yourself and say, hey, I've just accomplished so much. Look at how far I've come. Look at how much success I've made. And you just feel at home and you get to the comfort zone and you sit in your comfort zone. As long as you remain in your comfort zone, you will never arise and shine. If you are going to arise and shine, you must come to the point where you look at your past success 
and thank God for them. Then forget about them because there is more that God has for you. Come on, say with me, God has more for me. Say with me, God has more for me in the future. I'm pressing into my future. I'm pressing into my future success because God has something great for me. Many times people don't get to fulfill their destiny because they didn't learn to forget their past success. It is so important to know that for every great thing you have accomplished in the past, learn to thank God for them. Learn to rejoice over them. But never allow it to stop you because there is something greater in front. Amen. It doesn't matter how great the past was. It doesn't matter how much you have accomplished. There is still more. One of the books that inspired me so much in the 90s when I was uh, being uh, when, when I was uh, in the formative stage of ministry one of the greatest books I've ever read and I think I still have it in my library it says by Robert Sula it says failure is never final success is never ending and failure is never final that means in that whole book he talks about and all the great successes he had in ministry and all the great accomplishments after everyone in fact he built a glass cathedral they call it crystal cathedral after that, it's like the natural thing to do is to sell them and say, yeah, I've arrived. What else to do? Nothing more. But no, he says, for you to be successful, you need to keep forgetting the past success and keep pressing forward. After whatever great thing you have achieved, there's still more. There's still more. God, he has more for you. God, he has something he wants to do. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Can't you perceive it? No matter what he has done in the past, God still wants to do something new. So if you want to arise and shine, the process of arising and shining is for you to forget every past success. I challenge you today, forget your past success. Thank God for them, but begin to press on for the great things, the greater things that God has for you. Amen. The second thing you need to forget is your past failure. If you are going to accomplish great things in life, if you are going to succeed tomorrow and in the future, if you are going to arise and shine, you must forget your past failures. Because the enemy is going to try to use your past mistakes, your past failures, your past setback, whatever it is in your past that is haunting you, that is not allowing you to move forward. The enemy is maybe using it and talking to you in your head, trying to talk you down, trying to discourage you, but I've come to tell somebody, if you want to arise and shine, if you want to get to your destination in life, if you want to fulfill your destiny, you must learn to forget the past mistakes, the past failures, the past things that you did that you're not proud of. Repent of them if you have to. Ask God to forgive you if you have to. Change your ways if you have to, but forget them. Don't let them for become the thing that will stop you from reaching your destiny. Learn to put them behind. They belong to one place in your life and that is your past. There's nothing more you can do about your past. The only thing you can do about them, of course, learn from them if you have to, but forget them. Put them behind where they belong in the past and move forward. If you want to arise and shine, come on, it's time to forget your past sucks, your past mistakes. It's time to forget your past failures. It's time to put them behind you. Don't let them keep haunting you. Don't let the devil use them to haunt you no more because God has something ahead of you. God has something greater, something more beautiful ahead of you. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Apostle Paul said, brethren, Philippians 3 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the things that are before me. Even Apostle Paul, he didn't allow his past failure, his past success to hinder him. You talk of failure, he had failures. He was a disappointment to God because he was the chief leader who was persecuting the church. Of course, he didn't know God then. Then, of course, he thought he was working for God because he was religious at the time and he was persecuting the church. He would go and arrest them and prosecute them and kill them. He supervised the stoning and the killing.
name of the first mother of the body of Christ. When Stephen was being killed, he was the one who supervised it, who organized it. He, the, the people that threw the stone, they dropped their coats at the foot of him. He supervised the killing, but then God appeared to him. Christ appeared to him, and his life turned around. And when he looked, talked about his life, he don't he, he forgot the fact that he was a mean, wicked soul. He forgot the past that he killed many. He supervised him, the persecution of the church and the killing of many. He forgot that. He pressed on. Talk of success. He succeeded in the ministry. Do you know Apostle Paul planted more branches of, of the church than any other apostle? He wrote more books than any other apostle. He accomplished much, much more. He saw Jesus. In fact, God took him to heaven and showed him visions of heaven. And there are many things he wrote in his books that we are directly revelations from heaven when he went to heaven. But despite all that, some of us, if God takes us to heaven and we see heaven full, I mean, not once, not twice, and you have a thought of heaven. I'm telling you, some people, the echo will not allow them anymore to hear or to say anything. They are just going to become like mini God. And but God, Paul, Apostle Paul, despite the fact that he has had all those deep revelations and there are things he will say that God told him not to even write. He said, I can't even write about it. Things that he saw that he's not allowed to talk about. But despite that, he said, this one thing I do, I forget all of those. I forget my past exploit. I forget my past ministry breakthroughs. I forget my past fail failures and mistakes. And I press on. This one thing I do, forgetting the past, and I press on. If you want to shine, if you want to arise and shine, the process involves forgetting the past and pressing on. Forgetting the past and moving forward because God still has more ahead for you. Amen. Number two, the reason to shine. If God says arise to shine, arise and shine, what is the reason? What is the reason why you will shine? The reason is that your light has come. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 12, John 8 12, when Jesus spoke again to his people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whosoever follows me will never, you can underline the word never, walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The reason to shine is because you are the your light has come. You are the light of the world. The light that you walk on, you walk in, that you have is the light of God Himself. Is the light of Jesus, the Son of God. God has made us to be carriers of light. We are carriers of light. Your in your spirit man dwells the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost, the presence of God dwells in you. You are a carrier. You are a mobile light. You are a mobile generator of light because the light of God is in you. So the reason why you need to arise and shine is because your light has come. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14, ye are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. So in Christ, we are the light of the world. Why will you arise and shine? Because your light has come. Because you are the light of the world. If you are living in the place of darkness, if everyone around you live in darkness, I've come to announce to you that you you are the light of the world because Jesus says so. Therefore, rise and shine. Light can never, darkness can never overcome light. The absence of light is what determines the prominence of darkness. Let me say that again. The absence of light is what determines the prominence of darkness. So if it seems as if darkness is popular or is powerful, maybe in your family, maybe in your neighborhood, maybe wherever you find yourself, if it seems as if darkness is so powerful, it's so influential, no, it is not. The only reason why it seems as if dark darkness is running head or schedule, is ravaging the whole place, is, the, is because of the absence of light. But when the light shines, can, have you ever seen darkness struggle with light? No. Light can never struggle with darkness. But as long as there is no darkness, the light shines. I mean, as, as long as there's no light, the darkness 
permits and rules and it's as if the darkness is powerful if you come into a room and the room is so dark and there's no light in it as long as there's no light in it it seems as if darkness is powerful it seems as if darkness has them, this influence that has, is so dominating but guess what the moment you bring the light, no matter how small the light, no matter how little the light, even a speck of light, the moment it shines, pew, darkness pew, disappears instantly. Darkness will never fight light. Light does not comprehend with darkness. John 1 5, the word of God says, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. I've come to announce to you, no darkness. family. If there is a cloud of darkness, if there is workers and powers of darkness that are operating in that family and they are running heather scatter and they seem to be running the show, listen, it's because you have not shown the light. It's because there is no presence of light. Because it is the absence of light that determines the prominence of darkness. But when you as a child of God arise as a, as a light and you begin to shine the light, the moment to shine the light of the gospel. The, the darkness has no option. The powers of darkness has no option. The workers of darkness have no option than to disappear. I've come to announce to somebody, even as I speak right now, you will arise and shine. I command you now, arise and shine. In your life, arise and shine. In your family, arise and shine. In your destiny, arise and shine. In your place of work or business, arise and shine. Why? Because he are the light of the world. Because your light has come and the light cannot fight darkness or darkness cannot fight light. The moment light shows up, darkness disappears. No two ways about it. No argument, no wrestling, nothing. The moment light shows up, darkness disappears. I prophesy over you now. If there is any work of darkness that is working against you, against your life and destiny, I command the light of God, shine into your life. I command the light of God, shine upon your destiny in the name of Jesus. And when you see that the light is shining, you just see darkness walk away. And then light will just take its course. So, the reason for your shining is because your light has come. The reason for your shining is because you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Say to yourself, I am the light of the world. Say like you mean it. I am the light of the world. Jesus said it. I didn't say it. He says, you are the light of the world. Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And then in Isaiah, he said to you, arise and shine for your light has come. And then I want to talk about number three. I want to talk about the secret of shining. I'm going to talk about two secrets here. The secret of shining, number one. What is the secret of shining? The entrance of the world. The secret of shining the light of God in you and through you is the entrance of the world. Psalm 119 verse 30, 130. Psalm 119 verse 130. The entrance of thy world giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. The entrance of God's word given light. So if you want to understand the secret of your shining, if you want to understand the secret why you will shine in the midst of darkness, that is going to be tied directly to the entrance of the word of God. In other words, the proportion in which the word of God enters you is going to be the direct proportion to you which you will shine. Let me say that again. The proportion of the light of God that enters into you is going to be the direct proportion in which you will shine as light. 
Because the entrance of his word giveth life. That means the, word, the more the word of God enters you, the more you shine as light. The more you have an intake of the word, the word of God is light. The more the word enters you, the more you shine as light. The less of the light you have, the less of the light you shine. You know that you shine as a light because you have the light in you. But if you are not having an intake of the light, you have nothing to shine. The entrance of his word giveth light. So that's the first secret. The secret of shining is the entrance of this world. So you want to shine as light? Let the word of God enter you. You want to shine as light? Keep the word of God. Thy word have I kept in my heart that I may not sin against you. That is the secret. Number four, the second secret of shining. The second secret of your shining is the rising of his glory. The rising of his glory. John chapter 14, John chapter 17, verse 22. John 17, 22. And the glory which thou hast given me, this is Jesus here praying to the Father. And he says, and the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them, O oh Lord, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is what I call secret number two. The rising of his glory in you. Jesus prayed to the Father. He says, the glory which you have given me, I have given them. In other words, you and I carry the glory of God because God gave his glory to Jesus and Jesus transferred it. It's like delegated authority. It's like delegated light. We have a delegated light of God the Father in us. We are supposed to be shining that light. You are the secret of the light of God. God is shining his light to the world through you and I. We are the carriers of the light of God. We carry God inside of us. One great man of God that lived a long time ago, Smith Wigglesworth, he used to say, I carry God inside of me. Wherever I go, God goes there. You want God to go to Walmart? And let me go to Walmart. When I get to Walmart, God gets to Walmart. You want God to get to VA? Go with your light in you to the place of work in VA. When you get there to VA, God gets there. You want God to get to for please? Go with the light of God in you. Where you walk in for please? When you get there, God gets there. You are the carrier of God's light. You are the carrier of the presence of God. Let the glory of God rise. The rising of the glory. Because the glory has been delegated to you. It has been deposited in you. It has been transferred in you through Jesus because he says he has that glory with God the Father. He said the glory you have given to me, I have given to them. You are a partaker of the glory of God. I said you are a partaker of the glory of Jesus. You share the glory. You share in the glory of God the Father. You share in the glory of Jesus. Wherever you go, the glory shall radiate. It should radiate. It should shine in you. I prophesy over you from today no darkness can comprehend your light. You will shine as light. The glory of God will rise. Oh, I pray for you now. I prophesy over you now. May the glory of God arise in you. May the light of God arise in you. May the glory of God shine in you. May the light of God shine in you. For you are the light of the world. You are the carrier of the glory. The glory of Jesus lives in you. You are the carrier of the presence of God. The presence of God lives in you. Come on, stand on your feet now and begin to declare with your own mouth, I am the carrier of God's glory. I am the carrier of the light of God. Father, help me. Let my light shine. Help me to shine your light. Come on, talk to him now. Tell him, Father, help me to shine your light in my life. May your light shine in my life. In my family, let your light shine. You said, arise and shine. Today, I arise and I shine your light. Help me to shine your light wherever I go. May I not be a carrier of light and walk in darkness. I declare from today, I shall not walk in darkness. I am walking in light. I am a carrier of your light. I am arising today and I am shining your light. Father, I receive your 
your grace in the name of Jesus. And if there is anything in your life that has diminished that light, ask him for forgiveness now. If you have wandered away from him, if you have fallen short of his glory, if you have backslidden, now is your time. Ask him to forgive you. Return back to him. Cry out to him, say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I return back to you today. I give my life to you. I rededicate my life to you. I surrender my life to you. Everything in me that has made the light to quench, today I repent and I ask that you forgive me. I rededicate my life to you. Let your light begin to shine. Rekindle the fire of your life. Come on, tell him now. Rekindle the fire of your life in me. Let your light shine brighter in me. Let it shine in my family. Let it shine in my generation. Let it shine in my place of work. I receive your light, oh God. Let your light shine, oh God. Makapoka bovaza, labo shekatama, repo kato bava baza, yeke mago bava busata, janda bo katam bavaza, ekabo rebebebe e yama goba sota yada, eke mo kabo sata, le kabo shakatam bagataya. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. I give you glory. I give you praise. I worship you because you are worthy of praise. I pray for everyone who has heard and received this word. I bless them, O oh God. May this word produce a heart. May this one produce results. Help us to arise and shine as the light that we are. May we not walk in darkness. May we not be ineffective as carriers of your light. Help us to be light carriers that will shine our light in the midst of darkness. No matter how dark it may be, help us to shine our light that no darkness can comprehend your light in us because your word is true. Help us to have an intake of your light and take of your word inside us. As we hear this word, let that word produce light in us. Let that word empower us to shine as light. I bless your people today. Everyone watching, everyone receiving this message, I bless them and I declare, they will shine as light. I prophesy over you now. Your light has come. You will arise and shine. You will arise and shine because your light has come. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I declare today that I am the light of the world. I will arise and shine. Father, today I ask for forgiveness. Everywhere I have sinned against you that has diminished your light in me. I repent, oh God. I ask that you forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me from every sin. I give my heart to you today. I rededicate my life to you. And I ask, oh God, let your light shine in me. Let your light shine through me. Write my name in the book of life. I pray that you bring me into fellowship with you. God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. That I will be a carrier of your light. That your light will shine in me. That your light will shine through me. Thank you Lord. It is done in Jesus name. I bless you today. And I declare from today, you will shine as light. You will go forth and shine. In your family, you will shine as light. In your place of work, you will shine as light. At home, you will shine. Everywhere you go, you will shine as light. I declare, no darkness will comprehend your light. Hey, Magababa Bosata, no matter where you go, no darkness will comprehend your light. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I bless your people this morning. This word will produce a harvest and will produce results in our lives. We are shining as light and there's nothing the devil can do about it. Say to yourself, from today, I will arise and shine. Say it like you mean it now. From today, I declare, I will arise and shine for the light of God and the glory of God is risen upon me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. I would love to pray for our first time. So let's just take time to pray for our brother. Can you just step forward as we pray for him right now? I don't know. Once again, we welcome you. And I don't know where you are with God and what you, you want God to do for you from your heart. But as I pray for you.